So, a typical uh, welding station using laser is uh, it is also again very simple ok. So, the, the one of the schematic which I drew for the laser welding setup in uh, one of my labs in Europe ok when I where I was uh, working for several years and it had uh, an India laser ok of uh, four maximum of 4 kilowatts right. So, 4 kilowatts and we had about uh, uh, 10 uh, India uh, rods source ok. So, so each would be producing about 400 watts power or so right and uh, so if you look at the entire setup. So, this will be about close to 5 meters or so and uh, it will be about 2 meters in height about uh, 1 and a half meters uh, in, in wide ok and the inside that you will have an uh, India uh, rods and each rod should have its own pumping source and we used to have an, uh, a huge uh, lamps flash lamps ok. Uh, so, generally we can generate either with the pulse or with uh, uh, continuous lamps ok. So, it becomes pulse laser or continuous wave lasers and uh, so the entire setup is extremely in the complex because the each system should have its own pumping source lamps and your rod crystals and then and if one of the rods are broken or one of the rods are not working fine then you may not get 4 kilowatts ok. So, obviously you will reduce uh, 400 watts uh, if one of the rods are not working and if one of the lamps are broken pumping source again you will not put use any, any laser because unless you send the pumping lasers and then you cannot send you, you cannot generate any lasers right. So, want so you need to have an, a separate cooling because when the lamps are burning and the system should also be cooled because you have generate a lot of heat right otherwise the entire system can be you know heated up and can lead to an, a various um, uh, failure. So, you need to circulate water and the entire cooling and the la laser source itself uh, would need uh, such a big hall for an arc, including cooling including uh, the power source power generated for the lamps and everything. So, moment you have a laser and laser now once you have the beam and we do not have any problem you can transport the laser beam using an, an, a fiber optical cable ok. So, laser light can be transported using a beam delivery cable to the welding work station ok. And the moment you have a beam delivered then you also need to have a, an optical system to focus and defocus as well as to collimate. So, if there is a divergence small divergence happens with the beam delivery then you may also have a some collimator as well that is it ok. So, the lenses we will have to use uh, uh, different lenses based, based on the wavelength. For example, the CO2 lasers the wavelength what you look at it in this case so 10 micrometer ok. So, we cannot use in a, in a normal optical lenses to focus 10 micrometer uh, um, yeah the large wavelengths. So, we also use metallic lenses ok. So, for CO2 lasers generally we use uh, metal surface generally the copper coated with uh, gold ok. So, uh, so we use uh, the metal lenses to focus uh, the uh, lasers coming out of CO2 gaseous source and NDR source the wavelength is in a near infrared. So, we can use normal optical lenses uh, for NDR whereas in uh, uh, helium neon CO2 lasers then we will have to use uh, some special uh, metal lenses for focusing the beam. So, once you have a lasers and uh, yeah you can have an optical uh, systems to focus it onto the work piece is not it right. And the, the laser spot size or laser diameter can be made into a uh, very narrow using uh, um, the focusing lens. Say for example, you know we can get a spot size of a millimeter for a 4 kilowatt laser using a proper optical uh, focusing system. That means that the entire 4 kilowatt can be focused on at 1 millimeter diameter. So, obviously, when you look at the power distribution of the laser, ok. So, suppose if you want to focus a 4 kilowatt 
onto uh, 1 millimeter. You may never get uh, 4 kilowatt throughout the, the, uh, the uh, diameter of the 1 kilowatt or the 1, one, one mm. We will always have a power distributor in a Gaussian manner. Okay, so, if this is uh, distance or diameter, okay, so, so this is 1 meter, 1, one mm or so. So, the average power over this 1 mm will be 4 kilowatt. Okay, so, you always have a Gaussian distribution. The center of the spot, less a spot, you will have maximum power and you will have a Gaussian decay when you go out of the surface. The same as uh, you see it in uh, laser welding also. Right, the power distributed, it is always uh, a bell shape curve. Okay. So, so, once you have uh, laser focus, obviously, you can also have a manipulation for the, uh, the work table so that we can move uh, the work piece in uh, two direction x and y or even z. And if you move in z, obviously, z becomes your focal point. Okay. And in this setup, we also had uh, uh, an, uh, another mirror setup. So, that no, we can also reflect whatever happens at the work piece into a camera. Okay. So, on this camera is set up in such a way that the mirror sees exactly how the laser sees the work piece. Okay. So, advantage of that is suppose if you want to look at uh, the, the mill pool during welding. right? And if you want to observe the, how the keyhole forms, right? So then we will have to see how the laser sees the workpiece, right? So we have a uh, mirror setup, and this mirror reflects the light from the workpiece to the camera, and it is a 45 degree mirror, right? So laser somewhere, but it, we can have a set of a mirror somewhere, and which can reflect the the workpiece surface onto a camera surface, camera lens. Okay, so and we can make the video, and I'll show these videos uh, in uh, subsequent slides. Okay, so using uh, the laser power, and we can uh, either have a uh, full penetration uh, wells, or you know in a, in a keyhole um, wells, and uh, you can also reduce the power so that you now the laser doesn't penetrate fully, and we just heat up the surface, uh, and then we can do a welding conduction mode as well. And conduction mode is very widely used uh, for a uh, cladding applications or powder deposits or if you do not want to melt the entire uh, layer and uh, for some of the, uh, uh, the, the thin sections, uh, thin material, uh, low thicknesses, you do not need to form keyhole. Okay? So, you can just melt uh, and then do a welding in conduction mode. Right? So, it is clear so the, uh, how the, the experimental setup work. I okay, will show the video of these experimental setups, then we will go back, we will come back uh, to this slide. Okay, so, so the, the schematic I showed you is the my lab in, in Europe, in Netherlands, in a place called Delft. So, this is the, uh, the optics setup. Okay. So, the, the lens is inside somewhere over there, right, and the laser comes along this after uh, getting focused by the optical lens kept over there, and laser is uh, laser source is kept uh, one floor above okay so right above uh, this floor right and i there is also a sticker outside the door it says that uh, don't stare at the laser with re remaining your eyes okay, with remaining of uh, whatever left in your eyes so you can't see right so when you look at a laser moment you look at without bare eyes uh, you go blind instantly the, the radiation is so powerful, it can uh, burn uh, your uh, papua instantly. It vaporizes. Okay, so because of the radiation, and you go blind, just no time. So you need to have a proper protection uh, eyeglasses even when you go in, when laser is operational. And the the power of laser is so huge, and you can't imagine. Okay, so you may think that no, it is invisible. So when you use ND arc. If you look at it, you can't see because wavelength is beyond visual spectrum. You won't see the wave is actually operating because our eyes cannot recognize. Okay. So now what we are discussing is okay. So the laser source is 
uh, the first floor and it is sent uh, by the optical cable and uh, through these optics it is collimated and then focused and you see over a red spot uh, this is not actual laser it is actually uh, a pointer. Uh, this is used to uh, position the sample and this pointer locates the exact position of the laser which is coming out and this is ND arc. Okay, so when the laser beam is there and you do not see anything because ND arc wavelength is how much? Refer. What is the wavelength of India laser? 1058 nanometers, right? What? Yeah, 1065, 1058, 1065 nanometers. Okay, so when the laser comes in, you do not see anything, right? So, what we are going to look at it is so uh, uh, this blue cable it is actually a cooling system, cooling air, which actually it is air cooled system and you may also have an organ uh, cooling as well or organ backing as well shielding to, uh, to avoid the oxidation. Generally because uh, the, uh, the rate, heating rate is so high, you do not need uh, any protection, right. So this is actually an, a compressed air which is used for cooling of optics, uh, otherwise you may also end up heating up the optics as well, right. So now uh, what you are seeing over here, there is a sample here, right. So there uh, a tiny cantilever sample we placed and uh, if you see over here, yeah, so building is done. So in this case, the table can be moved in x, x and y direction and uh, by moving z direction we can change the, the focal point, right. The focal distance now is 55 mm and uh, you can also change the power or uh, the amount of energy you, you transfer to the workpiece by changing the focal distance, right. So because if you are defocusing the laser, so obviously the power distribution also changes. The Gaussian distribution I showed you that is when it is in full focus, the full focus is actually on the sample surface, if you defocus it and if it is uh, 4 kilowatt in fully focused condition and it may be 3 or 3 and a half kilo, kilowatt depending on how defocus your beam, right, okay. So it is clear the schematic how it actually works and because of this uh, very good manipulation then we can play around with the lasers much easily, okay. So one thing is uh, we need to make the optics much more uh, uh, simple and in this case the laser is mounted onto a CNC table, as so nowadays you can also mount the, the, the laser head into a robot as well, okay. And you do not need an, a very high payload because there is no real uh, uh, momentum for laser beams, right. So it cannot be ma manipulated lasers which e much easily, right. So now we will go back. So what we saw over here, it is we, we saw somewhere here on a table. So the entire thing and this is actually in the roof and then we had an such a big optics and uh, we saw the laser welding is happening somewhere here. In this case in keyhole mode because we are welding on 4 kilowatts and if you are welding it in a few hundred watts or few uh, uh, say 200 watts or 300 watts and you will not see that firecrackers. So you will be just seeing a heating of the surface then you will end up doing a conduction mode welding. Okay. okay, so now we will also look at the laser's point of view because we also have a mirror assembly and which can reflect whatever it is happening over here to a camera and we have generally an high speed camera attached to that system so that we can see in laser point of view, right. So then we can understand, so what is happening when the laser beam actually impinge on the surface, how it melts, how it the keyhole is formed, right. So laser sees the work piece like this. So what you see over here is illumination by the interaction of laser with the work piece, okay. So this is about <coughs> uh, the 0.8 millimeter thick plate, so from here to here and what you see over here is the keyhole, okay. So we are, we are looking how the laser sees, laser point of view top of the surface, okay, like this, 
Okay, so what you see over here <coughs> is the, the top of the keyhole and then you see over here surrounding this area and this is the molten material and this keyhole is actually formed because of the steel vaporization and we will see the, the keyhole dynamics in the subsequent uh, slides and you because of the, the vapor pressure and the recoil pressure the, the, the pressure erected by the, the pressure of laser going uh, the vapor going from the surface would also create a cavity forming this keyhole and then because of the severe heat generation you end up melting the region surrounding the keyhole <coughs> and you can see that see this. So, this is your molten pool right and the keyhole stability is now is affected severely because keyhole is not sta stable it is all the time changing and because of the imba imbalance in the, the forces that are happening that are generated in the keyhole. Yes, you see that? So, we are looking at in laser's perspective. So, laser spot size is, size is somewhere very tiny only. So, in this case we use a laser spot of 800 microns and this size will be uh, uh, about 5 mm the illuminated air region and the melt pool can go up to 15, 20 mm or so, right, it is clear. So, the molten pool always take the shape of a teardrop shape and because of uh, the severe temperature gradient that is prevailing uh, during welding. You see this, so this is the molten region in the pool and then when this structure solidifies, so you will have a columnar growth that is happening from the fusion boundary. So, fusion, fusion boundary is somewhere over here, is not it? So, this is the molten pool boundary and then when it solidifies, obviously it will solidify in a columnar growth manner, right? Good. So, any questions? So, what you see over here in laser's perspective is somewhere here we have a, we had a keyhole is not it? And this illumination and the keyhole and you have well molten pool forming a, a tear drop shape, right? And in uh, that uh, uh, the video the, the, the laser source is moving along this direction. So, when the laser source is moved, so obviously the heat extraction from the, the adjoining regions would let the, the pool solidify in a columnar manner from the fusion boundary towards the well center line. So, the solidification is actually determined by the temperature gradient. Generally, the temperature gradient during welding is extremely steep. So, the grinds would start solidifying in a columnar manner from the fusion boundary towards well center line, right? And uh, yeah, uh, because of the steep temperature gradient, the, the well pool shape is always tear dropped. So, we will do not go into the detail of that because we will see it in welding metallurgy. So, now we can assume that and because of the, the temperature gradient that are prevailing and uh, the well pool will be tear drop shape and uh, the, when the heat is extracted and we will have solidification starting from fusion boundary towards well center line and the grinds will solidify in a columnar manner and due to that you always have a segregation because this is the region which solidifies at the end and you may also have the tensile stresses that are developing because of the solidification shrinkage. So, solidifying grinds would be shrinking along this direction, but the, because of the constraint, mechanical constraint offered from the heat affected zone and there is always a tensile stresses acting to compensate the solidification shrinkage. So, the well center line would always be in a very high tension, right, it is clear, good. Any questions so far in the, the basic welding? Otherwise, we will move on to the, the physics of this process. And if you look at uh, in depth how the keyhole is actually formed. So, basically, so when you have a laser, it is actually it falls onto the, 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 the sample surface and we are welding along the directions. So, this is your uh, the keyhole. Formed 
and Kegel is formed because of this the, the severe heating of the molten pool leading to vaporization. And then the temperature of the molten vapor, molten metal decreases uh, as a function of uh, depth, right. So, you end up vaporizing more at the surface and then so once you start vaporizing, so you will end up forming a, a, a hole because the vapor is trying to escape. Right, so creating an, a huge amount of vapor pressure, and this vapor pressure would try to push the expanding, uh, trying to you know, the surface tension of the pool. So it's better explained uh, in, uh, yeah, this way. So, so when you look at uh, uh, the actual forces that are happen that are prevailing in the uh, the keyhole, the beam pressure. So, the beam pressure is the pressure is actually coming from the, the kinetic energy of the beam itself, okay, which would actually push the molten metal. So, this beam pressure would always aid formation of the hole, is not it? Because that is the kinetic energy of the beam itself, it is like a plasma jet force, right. And because of this kinetic energy dissipation, you also vaporize and this vapor would also try to push the liquid metal and that will also always create a hole, right, because of the vapour that are actually generated and this vapour is trying to push the surrounding liquid metal, it would always aid the hole formation, okay. And then when this vapour is trying to escape from the hole, they also push, they also generate the equivalent opposite force like a rocket, okay. So, when the rocket, when you send the, the hot gases, it goes up. So, when the hot vapors are coming out of uh, the hole, so they will also create another force which would also always aid the keyhole opening, you know, that is that force is known as keyhole recoil pressure, right. So, recoil pressure is when the escaping jet of vapor coming from the hole and you also create an equivalent force, a downward force that will aid the opening of the keyhole, okay. And these three forces would always aid the keyhole formation. The beam pressure is coming from the kinetic energy of the beam, the vapor pressure coming from the, 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 the accumulation of vapors which would always push. The, the walls of the keyhole. And third force is recoil pressure, a recoil pressure is generated when the vapor is escaping from the keyhole and you have equivalent force which is acting downwards which would always push the keyhole walls forming the keyhole. And there are other two forces which would try to close the keyhole which are gravitational forces, right. So, gravity, so when you are welding the laser is uh, uh, on the surface, okay. So, the gravity force will always try to close the keyhole, okay. And then the surface tension of the liquid which would also try to close the keyhole, is not it, right. So, if you look at the force balance, if you want to have a stable keyhole which is extremely critical for laser welding, if you do not have a stable keyhole and if the keyhole is collapsing and then expanding all the time and you also change the bead characteristics, bead geometry, is not it? So, if you do not have an, a, an a stable keyhole and if it is expanding and contracting, your weld shape is not uniform when you are doing welding, right. So, you will have a more volume of material, metal molten, you have a larger keyhole and suddenly you will also reduce the, the, the weld size, weld seam size when the keyhole size is reduced. Okay, if you have an expanding and closing keyhole and you also change the weld shape continuously during welding and if your keyhole is completely closed and then expanded and if it is exploded and you may also send a lot of liquid metal in around and that is spatter, is not it? So, the force balance is extremely critical to get a very good weld characteristics. So, force balance for the, the stable keyhole is obviously the aiding forces should be equal to the, the closing forces. So, what are the aiding forces? 
the plasma, the beam pressure and then vapor pressure, recoil pressure, so be equal to the surface tension and the gravitational forces, okay. So basically, so if you have a, a liquid layer and you will have uh, these three forces which would always try to push the key hole to closed which is gravity and the surface tension. Surface tension of liquid will try to close the wall, is not it? Similarly, gravity would also try to pull whereas the vapor pressure would try to push because vapor is generated and it is trying to expand because of the hot temperature would try to open up the key hole, right. And then the recoil pressure when the vapor is escaping and it will also generate a downward force which will also try to open up the key hole. And then the beam pressure which is actually kinetic energy of the beam which is actually always acting downwards which would also aid the key hole opening, right, it is clear. And these two forces would be balanced in order to have the stable key hole. So, the video I showed you, you see over here, if you see that the key hole is not stable at all, is not it? So, stable key hole I would expect, so it should have an, 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 an diameter of the, the top hole is constant when you are welding continuously over a large distance, okay. So, there is a specific reason why we have in this case a key hole is opening up and then closing up. And this cut off and key hole behavior, it is not suitable uh, for a stable uh, welding condition. Because in this case, for example, if a key hole is large, you may have a uh, large weld seam, more molten pole, so then the, the weld width will be much higher, okay. And the weld penetration will also be very high. And suddenly the key hole is closing, okay, so that could lead to a, a change in the weld size as well as uh, when the, op the closing of keyhole and expands and subsequently it can also cause a lot of stirring and the molten pool and you may also expel the liquid metal to uh, the other areas and causing a spatter, okay. And we will see why it is happening and what is actually happening in terms of force balances and which causes such behavior in next class, right, okay, good. Any questions? So far, so we looked at the laser, okay, so fundamentals of laser which is actually uh, high school stuff, we can always refer, so what are types of lasers, right, so solid state lasers, gas lasers and uh, fiber optic lasers and diode lasers we looked at and some fundamentals, very basic principles and we also looked at uh, the typical laser welding setup, right and, uh, and we also looked at the, the, the well pool and the keyhole behavior in laser's perspective and why this keyhole stability is affected and what causes the stable keyhole formation and how to balance the forces, we will see in the next class, right, good.